Hi, this is Julian D'Orazio. And this is Ian Sokolov. And this is Meaningless Chatter. And as well as that, today is a special day. It's the special 10th episode, everyone. The one I've been pushing for a while now. Now, why is that special? What's so... It's a double-digit number, first of all. That's a pretty cool thing. First double digit. Also, yeah, we base have... 10 pairs go over that. We have 21 subscribers now, Julian. Yeah. By the time recording this, I should say we have 21 subscribers. Yeah, we might have a solid 23. Oh my god, really? <laughs> but yes, yeah, so that's that's another really special occasion. But because this is the tenth episode, we've done this for around ten weeks now, not consecutively. Oh God, no! <laughs> <laughs> it's more like um, sparse in our yeah yeah. Anyway, but because it is a special tenth episode, we will be discussing our own personal views. Yeah. Ooh. Well, no, not necessarily our personal views. Just but... things we find important. Yeah. Well, not even that. I just. Things that we find interesting, honestly. Yeah, oh yeah, we're just going to talk. Yeah. This is going to be a more chill episode. There's no real structure. Yeah. yeah. We're just going to be talking, you know, couple, couple, knocking a couple of cold with the boys. <laughs> so dead this... memes be dead memes. <laughs> Play, just pay give respects. Up. So here's what's going to happen. Julian's going to just talk for a while and then decompress some session at the end, as we always do, whenever he feels done. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to record my, my, my uh, whole bit. And then, yeah. But to you, it'll be two episodes, so yeah. Yeah, this is gonna be a... We might even space it out by a week just to fuck with you. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> what if we want more views? Oh. Ooh! Dude, 21, and then we have another 21. <laughs> <laughs> we just hold the second half until we get 100 subscribers. Jesus Christ. We hold them hostage. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so, I guess I should talk about what I find interesting. Well... I don't have an introduction because yeah. you are four because you have a four. Like I don't, I can't do that now. So. Okay. I need a cue introduction. Say one. Uh. So let me break it down. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's let him break it down. Okay. Okay. So, right now there's a batchy. I always kind of sprinkled it in a couple of episodes back that I had this frame of thinking that has always been kind of off and different. I think. Wait. It's... Wait. I just don't realize something. Ethan, if you're listening to this, we miss you, buddy. Yeah, we miss you. You know, you're supposed to be on this episode, you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, continue. Okay, so I have this frame of thinking that I thought was always super interesting. It's Now I know it's kind of basic, but I still find it really intriguing. Now, I need to put in a lot of elements to go and fully portray this frame. So... I'll start by putting in those elements and also having a little bit of a translator that's sitting right in front of me. Hello! So, throughout this frame, I guess I should probably start off with the setting of this frame. So, when I think about the universe or anything like that, I always have this very, like, very, like, simple setting for it. It's not in all blackness. It's actually in a lit... I, it's either a lit room or a document. I mostly represent it by like a word, like a word document. It's just a blank page with nothing on it, and you just have a little bar on the side of it. I think it's probably because I'm a programmer, honestly. Because I... um, if I may, to everyone listening, Julian will be using a lot of computer metaphors, mm. ones, zeros, code, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, he's not because he's like only speaks in that. It's just because it's how he understands the world. Yeah. Like, I'll use a lot of romantic language just because that's I'm a writer. It's what I use. Mm -hmm. So yeah. That's why I'm here to explain to you. Mm -hmm. Continue. So, with this, with this blank canvas that you have in front of you, okay, no, there's something I need to add before this. Uh, Ian, you know what a base 10 structure for numbers are, right? Yes, that's the idea that there's only... 1 through 9, and then you double the digits. Yeah. Of course. Now, the way that this would work out perfectly is that this is like a base infinity structure. So what he's saying is that there's an infinite amount of numeric... Symbols in, yeah. for, for a specific sort of value. Yes. It's always another... It's always just add one, but the structure of every single number is not 1 through 9, then add another. It is 1 through infinity, and each symbol represents something above 9. So there is always going to be a different symbol to go and represent something past that. What he's saying is that instead of where you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, where it's 0, 1, and 2, 1, and stuff like that, it's it's more like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then... A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, then up there, that's hexadecimal, but yeah. yeah. 
And it's like, you push it up, and then, like, you would probably exhaust... You'd first exhaust the numeric, then you would exhaust the alphabetical, and then after that, you would exhaust something else, and then what you do then... You just do that for infinity. And what you... And if I may, every time I'm done translating for you, I feel like I want to press a, an unpause button. I don't know why. Yeah. It's just I have that... I need to press something to get you to continue talking. It's so weird. Yeah. I, I'm just, like, listening to you. It's nice. Continue. Okay, but there's just... Every symbol has a numeric thing, and the thing is, with these symbols being introduced, like, yeah, that's just a base infinity structure. Now, the thing is, is once you start creating random symbols for everything that's being introduced, sometimes the symbols might look as one another. The only thing that you can tell to differentiate these symbols from another symbol is that there was a symbol before it, and there's a symbol after it. They come in chronological order, if I could say that. Yeah, I can definitely say that. <laughs> yeah, it's one might say numbers always come in chronological order. Okay, no, but like it's not necessarily like it <laughs> yes, goes in yeah. like it, the symbols start from like left to right. If mm -hmm. you would start like that, and then they just go to infinity, and like the symbols are from and they go from f zero to infinity following this base infinite number. So it's just random symbols being incorporated into this random into this line until infinity and what you start to find is that this thing trails on until forever it's just massive document it's just a massive document full of just random figures going through and through and through and through and through so if i may yeah. what julian's describing now is the universe is a list of an infinite amount of uh, values and i i know what the next part is but i don't explain it until you say it so continue okay now this is kind of like, at the beginning you will find that there is nothing of actual value, there is no patterns that you might find that is of actual use. From this sort of universe that you find, all you will see at the beginning is, ran uh, is randomness. But, from later on you will start to see that some, patter some patterns will emerge because, you know, in randomness patterns do, well not patterns, but things that coalesce to something that might seem as a pattern will emerge. So, if I may put this in. Yeah. Uh, a good analogy for what he's trying to say would be, if you take a step back, the whole of the universe seems like a random jumble, jumbly mess. But in this mess, some things seem to have order with it, like gravity, mm -hmm. and atoms, and Guy Fieri's beard, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, like some people might start dictating that, oh, life has to be some sort of gift by God in itself. Yeah, like, Guy Fieri made you a sandwich and then yeah. gave it to you. But yeah. instead, it's more like Guy Fieri's kitchen just emerged a sandwich that you just so happened to like. Yeah. <laughs> I, I need to go and, like, give that God analogy because I really, it really applies to, like, life in itself. Where it's, like, such randomness births such complex patterns and such complex things that people might start to associate it with Something that only a divine creator can create. Like Guy Fieri, yes. Yeah, like Guy Fieri. <laughs> God, I fucking hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting for that. <laughs> but like, they would start to associate all of what they're um like all of what they see as something that only a creator can make. That was because of your laugh. I know. Hard. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Julian, stop being so funny. God. I know. I know. I'm Brad's just gonna hate listening to this. But uh. With these massive amount, with like this massive amount of randomness, you will find things that might seem astonishing. Like, oh, you might find like a hundred track, like, uh, like a bunch of symbols for like, from zero to like forty trillion of just symbols that represents one almost to a key, and like they are almost just a hundred, like a trillion ones in a row. And you might be like, oh, that has to be a symbol from the gods himself. It has to be uh, something that. A divine force has placed into the universe. Better analogy. Uh, farmers farming start praying to an unknown god and it starts to rain the next day. Yeah. Like, they might say that this has to be god's work, but it's just the universe in itself being as it is. Random. And within randomness, very, very complex structures can be, po can be made. So... When I'm talking about these symbols, I'm probably talking about subatomic level, like some very, very basic integers. If I may cut in for one second, uh, yeah. you are describing an idea of virtual particles, which uh, think of space-time as instead of a fabric, more like 
well, just like a space where things can exist, right? Mm -hmm. And the fabric of space-time isn't this neat little spandex that we all use in science class. Instead, it's more like a, a churning broil of, of oil, mm -hmm. where bubbles will appear and then disappear like that. Uh -huh. Th this this, this uh, churning and bubbling is particles being created. It's wibbly wobbly timey wimey ball of stuff. If oh. you want to quote Doctor Who in front of me, <laughs> quote it right. In fact, you're quoting the most popular episode of Doctor Who, too. So how dare you get that quote right? I want, I want one thing that's good. You didn't like Blink? Uh, you oh, like no, Doctor no, Blink. Who? Yeah, I don't like Doctor Who. Yeah, Actually, I, I, I thought that, like, yeah, I do like Blink. But the thing is, it's just I don't like Doctor Who. Yeah, so I was just saying, like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, no. I always thought, like, I, I watched so many Doctor Who episodes. And then, like... I was just like kept on going. I was like, there has to be more to this. How dare you? Anyway, I don't. Care. <laughs> I don't. You could. You could defend the most horrible person in my eyes. You could be. You could say the exact opposite of everything I believe in in politics and religion and everything. The moment you make fun of Doctor Who, it, it's it's fists out, buddy. <laughs> the end of our friendship has occurred right here. <laughs> Yo, what happened to Julian Ian? Yeah, Julian said he didn't like Blink, and, and then Ian just, just, just stabs him to yeah. death. <laughs> No, I liked. I enjoyed Blink. That was probably the only good episode. Though. It's really good. Yeah. Anyway, my point is that this churning, bubbling, like cauldron of oil is things existing and non-existing, and just the true randomness of the universe comes alive. Yeah. Yeah. So virtual particles are exactly what you're trying to say. Yeah. Continue. Uh, so what what I'm talking about in these small integers is that like they're very like these things are nothings in the grand scheme, but. When there's a coalescence of probably about five million, it might start to become something visible to the human eye. But this is before humans. So in between, in between this, probably in the first trillion pages of this document, you'll start to see that the document starts to have small little patterns. And in between these patterns, no, surrounding these patterns, you find smaller patterns, smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. You'd find these dot. You might find these trillion one shape in symbols, then forty million X shape in symbols, and then you know it just breaks down smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller from there so until you have like five fives from what you see, and then that continues on and on. And the one thing that you might consider to be the only true pattern that is actually distinguishing itself from the symbols in itself is that the patterns somehow and the symbols in themselves somehow have an effect on the surrounding symbols that they have around them and the only way that you can go and try to go and describe this effect is like gravity in a way where you might have something of such a large input into the whole entire fabric of like gravity and like of the universe in itself that it starts to dis it starts to impact the surrounding area leading to the symbols also following this order order is not stable, of course. But throughout this order, you would start to lead to less and less order. May I... May I uh, translate? Uh, yeah. You translate and uh, offer a, a, an idea. First translation, what he's saying is that over time, order seems to have appeared out of, from nowhere. Mm -hmm. But he's trying to say, again, this is just the randomness at play mm -hmm. where order will appear. And, then, and here's my idea. Mm -hmm. Could you say that order begots order? The fact that this order exists just so happens to cause more somewhat seemingly orderous things to happen. Gravity, for instance, causing the planets. Mm -hmm. It's not that gravity existed to make planets, it's just that now gravity exists and its effect upon this randomness that you speak of mm -hmm. will cause planets to appear. I wouldn't... Wait, the introduction of gravity as the pattern in itself would cause pa um, planets to appear? I, I'm kind of a... By putting it in your analogy, you, you, it makes no sense. But keep with mine right here, right? Yeah. If order begots order, that means that one one pattern in your mm -hmm. in, is, is, ex, infinitely long stream of symbols, that, that little pattern, right, mm -hmm. it influences the symbols around it to also follow a certain pattern, yeah. even though that's just what happens. It's not like someone's ordained it. It's just the randomness acting within itself. Yeah. Could you say order begots order about that? Yeah. Okay, cool. 
You don't need to understand that. I already just told it to you. I'm talking to Mike. Hi, Mike. Uh, Mike is what we call the microphone, if you don't remember. Um, to, pe- to the mic, to people at home, uh, I was retranslating to Julian. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is weird. I've never had to do that before. Okay. The Basically, the whole entire gist, if I need to go and also put it... Yeah, just, gonna no, sum- no, just do. Speak. Yeah, no, I'm just going to sum it up because it'll put me right back into my flow. So... What happens is, is that throughout this order and in this entire system, the random integers will continue to go off and off, and then they would be impacted by the massive pattern that happened before them and fall into a smaller pattern like that, and they would dissipate into smaller and smaller and smaller patterns until eventually the last of those patterns is a very short, inconsequential pattern, which is like, like one, like two ones, and that's it. Now, after that you will have a, uh, that is more or less the metaphorical way of me saying of intro- of the introduction of gravity into this entire system, where it's just the larger the pattern, the larger the bits of order that exist in between. You're it. going chronologically in time, from beginning universe to kind of, our yeah. eventual end. Well, I'm going to just say that, like, just go over the big highlights yeah, of yeah. it. Just like, the introduction of gravity, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, from there, you would start to have the coalescence of, like, massive, larger and larger planets. Instead of, like, a group of a trillion, you would probably have a group of, like, sextillion yeah. numbers that are going in, and then little by little, they'll start to dissipate after that. And you start to introduce larger and larger patterns. And they might have orders that, like, might not just be tr- groups of trillion ones, but, like, number sets that are within them. Instead of, like, it's like a... Four six seven four three two. That like that pattern is set in between a set of like forty billion or something like that. It's just massive amount. Is yeah. what I'm trying to say. I understand. And throughout that, uh, you would start to get more and more complex patterns because there's such a massive amount of just like variables working off of one another. You would start to get these very complex things working between this system of n- of randomness and. In between this system of randomness, you'll start to get some very complex patterns that might even start to consume other patterns around them. Now this is... Because the patterns are kind of like their own element and they have a, and they have an influence on other, other patterns, you might start to call them kind of like... I don't know. Uh, I don't know how to properly word that. You might start ha- start to call them like specific sort of like elements and stuff like that because they have like specific patterns and like specific patterns have some sort of like let's say that if you have like a pattern of like some sort of like negative number or something like that like just a pattern of like i don't know whatever representation of a negative number would be inside of this sort of area like you would possibly lead to uh it would possibly lead to like dips in between like, causing to like patterns that would also also be negative but whatever. i feel like this is more order begots order yeah I guess. Yeah, order begots order, whatever. And I know, if I'm wrong, correct me. Like, even if I'm, like, a little I wrong. Kind of, I'm kind of not, like, super... I don't know what that, like, order begots order means. It's just that... So, begot means to, um, to follow or to create. Yeah, just order follows order. Yeah, or, or creates order, yeah. Yeah. Does that make more sense to you, or... Yeah. Okay, cool. So, just within it, it would start to lead to, like, more complex, um, complex things. And eventually, some of those complex things... Will start to realize that holy shit, I am a complex thing. This How... is the creation of life, and it won't necessarily do that by like you know just being a thing and then dying off. Most of the times, you'd probably go and to do that and to be like, I can go and keep this going. Now, this is kind of a weird thing because I also, this kind of correlates to my own view on philosoph on. Um, philosophy and why the purpose of living is and the purpose of living to me is kind of just to leave i guess to leave a mark on your surroundings in any sort of way and not in any sort of way in the way that you where your goals are pushed through and there is no like when i say purpose i mean that like your goal subjective your what you want as a mark subjective so so um there is a dip in the relative i mean there, there, there was to Mike, not you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Hello, Mike. Um, there was a dip in Julian's language right there, and unless you were paying attention, you might have missed it. He went from his coding analogy to just his beliefs, 
And while I believe what he's saying, I, I, I um, agree with him, I'm going to be very snarky right now because mm. this is something he has told me doesn't matter. Uh -huh. He just, basically what he's saying is that life's purpose in quotation marks, right? Uh -huh. Or philosophy's purpose in quotation marks is to have your, uh, your mark on the universe as you see it. Something I've said is a very valid point and Julian has said, yeah, really, I want to leave my mark on the world. So, I am just wanted to stop it so he could hear me talk, you know, about it. It's probably him. because the more you are talking so to much, Mike. The more the more talking to work Mike. Has so much of a connotation. I am talking to Mike right now, okay, Julian? Hello, Mike. So I'm going to talk to Ju about Julian to you guys just to make him sit there with his little cute patty face. Okay, you can continue now. Okay. <laughs> so when I say Mark, I just I just mean that you have an objective that you'd like to complete and your entire purpose of living is to go and work out this objective that you have. Sometimes it's to reproduce sex. Sometimes it's just to, like when I say sex I mean you know whatever. Uh, no, I, I just like the idea when reproduce sex. And it's like, you know, sometimes it's to go and cause some sort of political disorder or to go and like lead to another political thinking fr frame of thinking from as big to change the world to as small as feed a raccoon yeah yes yeah like and so what so these things usually go into like an x or y sort of uh version of replenishing the world of like of becoming living organisms what they do to live at all is that they consume patterns that are smaller than them and have very complex roots but more or less are smaller than them and also don't have the sort of physical capabilities as they do. Mm -hmm. And they consume these patterns and then they integrate those patterns that they consume back into themselves so that they can... This, this is literally eating. Yes, they... Yeah, they, <laughs> they are... This is how Julian thinks about eating. Yeah, they redistribute whatever sort of values that they had inside of that organism into themselves. You know, you might have that, uh, I don't know, some monster from a specific show that feeds off of fear from another organism or something like that. So, if, if I may, yeah, what you're speaking of is a leech-like creature, a parasite. Well, not necessarily a parasite. It is a... So, the entire thing is that, like, it just it just consumes something. It just consumes a unit. doesn't need to be a living organism. just consumes a unit of something, of what it deems to be a pattern. Because, remember, what we're saying are patterns aren't really 100% patterns. What? So, I need to, I need to double layer yeah. into his words, translate right now. Huh. This creature he's speaking of. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be very little with you right now, Mike. What you're going to have to do is take him for his word. Imagine this mass of numbers. Imagine this, like, this ball of mass of numbers, right? And, each, and imagine there's a pattern to these numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Now, why I need you to do that is because that's way too... Co I need to have a whole discussion trying to translate that for you. Just take that literal. And so what his next phrase was that these patterns aren't really patterns. He was hearkening back to the idea that this, ide that this idea of order is really just... An idea. Yeah. Excuse me, are you the Julian translator? No. <laughs> He's hearkening back to his idea that order and patterns is really just how we see the randomness and chaos of the universe. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you can continue. So oh, Don't try to take my job. So you know, like, you might go and give a fucking, you might go and give a, a cat, like, a little piece of, like, Oh, yeah, so you no, cut no, off no, your no, no, from before. no. I'm thinking of something that's clearly not food. Like, oh, you go and give a like a bird. Dog. Like, you go and paint a little pebble orange, and then you feed it to a bird, bird, and make it think. <laughs> you that just start throwing orange rocks at birds. Yeah, you Eat just, <laughs> like make them think that it's like some sort of sustenance. But the truth is, is that like what the best it can perceive is food, isn't food. So these organisms go and they try to perceive the best that they can what is food, and then. They, you know, they perceive wrong. Oh, I guess that trail of about 50 ones isn't what I thought food was. Oh, well, I'm dead now. And then the ones that are really good at perceiving on what food is, live. Okay, so I've been waiting for you to get to this point so yeah. I can explain. Because I, I really enjoy your analogy right now. Yeah. Uh, what Julian is talking about, Mike, is that the um, this creature, this mass of numbers and what this pattern, right? Mm -hmm. When it sees a mushroom. It eats that mushroom thinking, oh, food, good for me. 
and it eats it, and then it dies like a deadly, deadly, dead thing. Yes. And then whatever creature saw that happen or knew not to eat that mushroom will continue. He's speaking of natural selection and evolution. Mm-hmm. We've gotten to... Small tangent. I'm going to ask you something. Yes. Is natural selection and, uh, what's that word that represents, like, something dying? Like, an entire species dying? Extinction? Yeah. Is natural selection and extinction kind of the same thing? No. No? Extinction isn't necessarily because the animal was not suited to adapt or to live. Extinction extinction is literally just the word saying this species no longer exists. Yeah, so that's kind of like natural selection. No, 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 no. Why. here's why. Because dinosaurs are extinct, not because they couldn't adapt to the times... Mm-hmm. Because there is a catastrophe that no one could live through. <laughs> this is going to be dumb. Aren't meteors natural? <laughs> I will throw you out the window. Yeah, come on, we both I know it. I will throw we you both know it. <laughs> <laughs> Meteorites are really just other creatures. No, no. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, oh, you, oh, I guess you drowned in water. What a fucking Okay, idiot. the dodo bird. That was not natural selection. The dodo bird did not die. Oh, from you don't believe I human don't. beings are natural? Bullets aren't. It's a weapon we use in the same way the fish spits No, 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 no. You can. cannot claim that bullets are a natural, you know, byproduct of the Everything earth. that has ever happened is a natural. Oh, re- we plastic. Are just, we are plastic just, is natural. We are just taking in... Sorry. We are just taking in our surroundings and incorporating uh, mm-hmm. them okay. in small patterns that so allows Mike, us to go so and Mike, take them. So Mike, hello Mike, what Julian's saying is utter bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for, thank you for translating. You're welcome. Okay, okay. I'm going to abuse my power if I need to. Yeah, I know that you're probably going to go and team up with Brad so that you fucking misconstrue my <laughs> argument. You fucking I have never, bitch! <laughs> I have never done that. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, have, I have never done that. Okay. Brad has been a very equal opportunity bullshitter. Yeah, he, he kind of, like, keeps you away from doing it. I can tell. <laughs> this Brad is the inner, is the inner one within this entire situation. Oh, no, guys, like, me and Julian hate each other. Like, Oh, yeah, no, honestly, whenever I talk to Ian, I just want to, like, stab him. Well, like, I've planned his death millions of times. We're only doing this for Brad. Like, yeah, he's because, dying of yeah, cancer. Yeah. Like, like, this is a big And the way that we treat him is that we go and, like, whip him and tell him to <laughs> get our podcast out every single week. We abuse him so that he does our bidding, and that's what he likes. Yeah. He really enjoys that. He enjoys how he cries in the middle of the night because <laughs> how his friends hate him. He, he was on the podcast once and was silent. Yeah. You guys what never knew. What a fucking loser, guys. He could be right. He could be here, right? I could be Brad. You know, honestly, we, we cut this out. We're cutting this out right now. Whenever we're like, we leave the room where you hear somebody opening the door, yeah. it's us going and dragging <laughs> out Brad in the middle, middle of the living room and just beating <laughs> the shit out of him. We blame him for everything that goes wrong. And you want to know something? We cut out a lot. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. His cries, they're so loud. Yeah, and you want to know something? He's so silent too. We want to know why? Him. Because we fucking beat out his yeah. teeth. We he force him to cut out his own cries for help. Yes. Oh my god. This... Brad's a bitch. Fuck you, Brad. Fuck you, Brad. Okay, okay. We can go back. Yeah, he's probably not going to keep that. So where do... Where... Oh yeah, we're talking about natural selection. Yes, natural selection. So you yeah. asked if natural selection was extinction. No, they're not necessarily the same thing. Okay. There. It's just like... End of podcast. Bye, everyone! No, no, no. <laughs> but you start to have organisms that are allowed to... Um, that start to allow themselves to incorporate themselves within, like, the inner rules of whatever patterns that they were already involved in. And whatever patterns they... Yeah. Okay, whatever patterns they were already involved in and whatever patterns they were, like... Uh, their surroundings are, and they allow themselves to go and operate off of those patterns. Now, this is the point where I start to go and rip my imagination away from my initial por- my initial portrait. Because the initial portrait, there's just not enough space, you know? Mm-hmm. Fucking double wide rule, probably like a 12 by... 12 by 15 inch thing. You're getting so specific for this analogy. No, I know the portrait. The thing is, it's just not enough space. So I usually interpret into the three-dimensional space by now. And so the what thing- he's saying is that his analogy of a single paper document on Word won't fit for what he's trying to... It's basically now the dialect of Julian now I'm about to translate. He's explaining why he's changing. Okay. Continue. So what you can understand is that in between these symbols, they are... Quite literally, the analogy that represents our 
whole that are, represents all of the elements and existence of the world. All the symbols are just a co like all the more or less complex, like semi-complex patterns, where it's just like a thousand ones. Those more or less represent the small atoms that, or the small, small molecules that make up a specific sort of thing. Where it's like, oh, you have gold. What do you have? So about 40, 000, uh, 45,000 ones or like 75,000 twos. Or it's just, you know, you have those baseline patterns, but they more or less represent themselves in something that is not like that, but instead a small little bit of gold dust. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, in between this world you would have to start to realize that you can't necessarily rule in these two-dimensional dog and these... <laughs> By the way, Ian, Ian has his, the back of his shirt over his head right now. He's just being a fucking idiot. I was waiting for you to... I just want to mess you up right there. I'm sorry. Continue. It's fine. So, you would have to understand that, like, even though... Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> so, even though they're, like, they're more or less made like this, the patterns in themselves start to get represented by other things that are easily or better to represent them with, and that's usually their hunk of like what they're like what they're more or less resembling. Like you know, you more or less portray a human being as head, arms, torso, and everything. But if you actually start to go down to what the elements of the human being are, you start to realize that there's billions of billions of cells at work that all represent specific portions of him. Basically, what Julian is saying right now is, I, I'm pretty sure you guys can keep along at this point, but just in case, for those who couldn't, like, you know, yeah. make this step above, what he's saying is that you can claim that uh, something is simple, right? Like, 2 plus 2 will e always equal 4. But when you delve into it, there's so many small working mechanics into it that it's really a lot more complicated and complex than it might otherwise seem. Yeah. By the way, that's why I believe in determ determinism. But and that's why I believe in uh, free will, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Right. Did you tell me to continue? No, no, no. I'll you just said continue. I'll continue. I'll continue. I'm I, so I, sorry, I, Mike. Yeah. Julian forgot how this podcast works. Okay. I'm the dominant one. This is my pod. Stop it. Also, what's your... We will find out on my episode. Are we going to stop today or no? Okay, whatever. Let's go back into it. So natural selection happens and whatever. It's all based on the environment that surrounds it. Okay, but here's the cool part though. You start to realize that these organisms are only based off the patterns that they w that they live within. And they only work off of the ability to recognize patterns within that pattern, within those groups that they live in. So you have some really weird ass looking organisms. Stuff that have... Entire centers that are completely made just so that they can go and operate, so that they can visualize the patterns that surround them. If I may, so yeah. Mike, hello. What Julian is talking about is a YouTube channel called Tear Zoo. Look it up, it's really cool. And I know, I know, I'm not like making fun of anything, it's just you're referencing it, I can tell in your language. You got this idea from Tear Zoo, also I, influenced I was you. Actually, do you want to... What I'm saying is that you were inspired by Tear Zoo. I can hear it in your language. It's... Whether whether you I got the original idea from there or not, how, what you're speaking about is very reminiscent to Tier Zoo's structure. I, even if it's not, I still want to plug it because it's really cool. Yeah, Tier Zoo is really good. T-I-E-R? T-E-I-E? How do you spell it? Uh, I, just, it's T-I-E-R-Z-O-O. -O. Just yeah. look up Our Humans OP on YouTube. Well, yeah. Um, continue, I, I'm the sorry. way. Okay, let me go and talk a little bit about Tears of You. No, 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 no. Continue. Okay. We um, use a decompression session. Okay. The um, organisms in themselves are based upon their environments that they are, and the humans are based on their environments and their surroundings, and that allows them to go and take on the shapes of their environments and their surroundings. You know how gravity goes and affects everything surrounding it, allowing all those individual. Uh, integers to go and reflect that by having massive patterns surrounding it. It's the same thing, but a little bit more complex. So allowing them to have patterns that reflect them, but a little bit more complex than a billion ones, but more like number sets that are extremely complex. He has said nothing new yet. Don't worry, Mike. Yeah, it's nothing. Hmm. So uh, I guess within them, it allows them to go and completely visualize these very uh, no allows them to go and form these very complex organisms and these organisms that that go and reference patterns and they act within these patterns start to develop and just become more and more complex and they start to take on like you know past cellular level and they go up to like actual organisms and they start to feed off one another and the only thing that really i came out of this 
I came up with more. I know that, but evolution. That's yeah. what he's speaking about. Yeah, I came up with more, but I remember that like the big thing that I actually came out with is just that the truth about like first of all, these patterns that you might perceive to all be there. The big cosmic joke about the entire thing is maybe it's not. He's saying that what you might find important, Mike, it probably and most likely isn't. No, it's not just that. It's that organisms in themselves, you might say that they're super complex patterns, that they're all something there that they have oh, to be. Oh, okay, that like, okay. Yeah. The version of reality that you see the world in, the version you've been witnessing, all of all of the um, all of not the United States, I was about to say that, <laughs> all of the universe take place in the way that I was just leading it to you is the third, is the third person objective god view that I just allowed you to be. You are part of this ecosystem. You are part of that, and by that, that means that you only get to see a small sliver of this grand document that you've seen. Now help me if I may, Julian. Mm -hmm. A little side conversation with our audience. Hello, Mike. Yeah. So, what Julian just said is that he has given you a window to the world as an objective person would see it. Not like a person who doesn't have any opinions, but someone who isn't part of it, right? But why I want to take your side is just to keep you guys aware that everything we say right now doesn't mean what we're saying is 100% right. Please, do not- Oh yeah, no, this is just my dumbass theories. It's not dumb, but I want to make sure, because I don't want us to sound like we're giving, like- A fucking cultist lesson? Yeah. No, no, no. no it can... doesn't sound like I just want to keep us from it, so listen, we don't know as much about philosophy as we think we know, and everything we have combined is kind of like hodgepodge together. So what Julian is saying is uh, valid, and what he's saying is um, smart. Mm -hmm. Just know that like we're not any better than you are. Yeah. Unless you know your name is Brad, in which case. Yeah. I mean, then you're definitely not better. Than us. <laughs> yeah. Like, whoa. <laughs> if you even think about it, we'll stomp your teeth in. We know you're listening. <laughs> yeah. Beach ass Brad. <laughs> okay. Continue. Okay. So. Where was it? Oh, we were talking about. No, what were we talking about? You just gave us the objective view oh, yeah. outside of this pattern. Okay. The entire thing is, is that throughout this most complex of patterns, throughout the most, the, the, inter, the, the introduction of life, the introduction of life's evolution throughout all of this, you might start to think, it has to be a creator. There has to be. There's no such thing as a pattern as complex as something like, the, uh, what is it, as just a one-time coincidence as something like this. It's infinity. As it is, throughout all of this, you might just be a single variable away from being finished, and all of this just might be in nothing. What he's saying is that at any given moment you could die, well, and... It's not just that. You might lose all of what you deem to be reality. Excuse me, are you the translator? Continue. Oh, fuck, bitch. The world doesn't care about you. Nothing you have is permanent. Is that is am I right here? No, it's, I'm not. No, it's in a way, kind of, because yeah, like the way when you said the world, I guess it kind of pushed me in. But like the universe, well, the universe and the world are used interchangeably. People say the world, they think the earth. I say the world. I mean everything that as it is, ever was, or ever will be. Yeah, the you know whatever you deem to be, what you base reality can be a complete fabrication that you don't even know. You might not know that the ground, like, maybe the ground's not solid. We like, don't know. We don't know. The Matrix could be home. Yeah, ex that's what I mean. That's what I truly mean. That, like, yes. people, like, you might think that all your political ideologies might be shaken. That's not what I mean. I mean everything yeah. above foundation. that. foundation. Yeah, your foundations of being are that. And think that the truth behind it is, if you stare at our anatomy, you understand the mechanicalness of our nature, of what we are, our... Whatever our universe was defined by is defined by this extremely, like, cause and effect nature allowing us to go and have these super complex, like, organisms. If you really think about it, are some weird fucking structures. He's giving, um, <laughs> just so he doesn't think he's being slick here, um, I don't think he, he knows what he's doing. He's taken his analogy of the computer programming to try to explain how he sees the world and is now using it to explain why he believes in the idea of some type of matrix. 
<laughs> well, maybe, yeah, I do believe it's some sort of link, but it's not. I didn't intentionally do that. You're right, but you're, you're, uh, you're doing it. Yeah, yeah. It's not bad. I just want to make sure you I know. I do what actually you're doing. believe in the Matrix. But, I know, oh, but it's not a bad thing. That's going to be a later point. Okay. But uh, the entire thing is that so within this universe, what we have is just these very, very large, expansive creatures that don't necessarily have any sort of. Okay. Let me explain this in a better way. Human beings by themselves are very random. You might suspect, like, out of all organisms that could ever create, if you throw away all your values, and if you throw away all the things that you consider to be bases for a universe to exist, what you have usually is math and simple geometry. Mm -hmm. Why is there gravity? doesn't need to be gravity that's just one of the larger patterns that we found and it's not just one of the larger it is the grand pattern within all of it is that it intersplices in between the universe and itself when there are large patterns small patterns within them start to surround the edges of them well within gravity you start to have organisms that need to go and apply muscles to their body so that they don't just fall directly to the ground and you know just die off order be god's order order be god's order yeah now why within that gravity you start to have and um, not not within that gravity with because of that you start to have organisms that are structured differently then you have the ability to perceive other um, you have the ability to perceive other organisms or other patterns your own pattern recognition and then you start to have this big hunk of meat that's within your own goddamn skull mm -hmm. now Your fat cock over your shoulder. <laughs> it's my big hunk of meat. Okay, yeah. <laughs> You're fucking dumb. So <laughs> what you, Mike, what you did not see is that I made, my, I put my hands like as if I was holding something, right? And then I took those hands and I threw whatever I was holding, this is me miming, over my shoulder. And Julian thought I was speaking of some sort of perverted genit genitalia. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> Yeah, I was just thinking about the worst possible inferences <laughs> from him fucking gesturing <laughs> over his pelvis with his, when I said big hunk of meat, you know, maybe it was just referencing the brain and throwing it over his shoulder and so, while also keeping that form at a consistent cylinder while he was going over his shoulder. <laughs> he was definitely referencing his dick, is what I'm trying to say. A hundred percent. That was his cock that he just threw <laughs> over his shoulder. <laughs> Don't fucking clap. <laughs> Are you gonna do it again? You thought about it, you fuck. Okay, okay. You get these very off looking anatomical figures. You, of course, you have all the other organisms that's ever existed, but then you have the one that's on top on Earth. It's just, if you think about it, you have this towering being that allows itself to go and <laughs> that has a brain in it and then it just goes and it thinks. And if you really think about what a brain is, it's fucking stupendous. It's the only part of our entire anatomy that is completely alien to us. It's amazing, honestly. And we base a lot of our like massive scientific computer mostly, but like like computer science in like off of these neural networks that our brain uses in itself and then it coalesces into consciousness like deep think is literally just the human brain it's fucking beautiful it, it's i would if i may interject. It's, it's a little bit more than that no no if, if i may interject hello mike it's me again what julian's talking about deep think is basically in um what's it called i keep forgetting the name for it program uh, it's, uh, AI? algorithm. Oh, yeah. Al an AI, AI and algorithm, right? Yeah. Artificial intelligence. Exactly. But where I want to interject is not to explain what deep thought is or deep think, right? Deep think is just something. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to, I want to actually correct Julian to say that his point is more right than he knows because deep think is not as complicated or as robust as a human brain is. It's just random. It's super fucking random and it's yeah. beautiful. Like... It's what it is, is that it allows a, a bot that has two... You see all the same CGP Grey that he was made. So it's just two bots. It's a bot that creates random uh, creates random bots and a one that tests it. And it allows it to go and have a goal in mind. So what it does, I'm just basically going to describe the CPG Grey video. Uh, well, actually, go watch it. It's, uh, what's it called? How Algorithms Works? No, it's just how, like, the YouTube... It was more or less like a clickbaity video in a way. And a lot better, though. 
Yeah, it's just go to CGP fantastic. Great. He's amazing. Also, if I may, right now, uh, I'm just going to stop you from saying exactly what you're about to say because you already explained it. You're saying how randomness causes an order like substance, not substance, but like like creation. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah. So just skip over it. I'm okay. sorry. Like I know you're no. like on a roll, but like yeah. I just don't want you to like end up repeating. Either yourself. way, our if you start to go and incorporate and start to really start um, like take that sort of fundamentalist view of the entire surrounding, and then you put it back to a local level like us. You start to realize the whole entire alien nature of um, alien nature of everything that surrounds you. Why on earth? Oh, God damn it! <laughs> I'm speaking so locally. That's but fine. Like, that's fine. But like, why in this universe, out of everything that exists, we could have such creatures that are three dimensional that have fleshy parts in them that are all organic matter that allows themselves to stick to a center port, and that's like a central a center portion that allows all of itself to go and connect to one another. That creates an organism like us. Why? We could have just become large cells, massive cells, be balloon sized organisms that were all just like bubbles that just feed off of in absorbing one another. If you think about it, why not? But they started to go and do something a little bit more complicated. They started to group together, form more complex patterns that will more uh, unite themselves into becoming super complex organisms like us. Who just made a dick joke? Yeah, like people that make dick jokes. No, but seriously, that's like that's a good way to end it. Well, uh, not to end it, but like to end that sentence. Yeah. Because like, there is no reason, and there isn't a reason. There is nothing that says we can or can't be existing. Yeah. And even with that existence, humans are beautiful and and confusing because we make dick jokes. Yeah. Like. I have this one fucking dumbass book that I, like, I write down my thoughts, like, you know, not emotional, because I'm not a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, Brad! Yeah, fuck you, Brad! <laughs> but, uh... Oh, he's gonna... He's gonna look at that audio and just be like... <laughs> <laughs> just, he just, remembers his wife but like, he used to have. But the thing is, is that when I look at the universe, I just think, you know, we always create them. We create universes in ourselves. Like... By creating, uh, like, mostly video games at this point. Mm -hmm. Like, whenever, yeah, whenever we create video games, we make very, like, not, um, like, we create abstractions of what the universe we perceive to be is. And, you know, if we're not basing it off of realism, we tweak it into making the most beautiful figures and things that we could ever imagine. And the thing is, is that if you turn the dial on anything, you start to view the most amazing things possible. Like... There are, if you understand how weird humans are just by being humans and how weird our surroundings are, these bipedal organisms that go and they eat grass and fuck with your lawn and there's these squirt, there's these like rectangular structures where these human beings nest and live and then they eventually die without leaving. The world is nuts! So, Mike. Hello, it's me again. I'm nerding out right now. <laughs> Julia and I are both big believers in something called absurdity. Yeah. Science, not science, philosophy of the absurd. Uh, founder, Albert Camus, read The Stranger, it's really good. Buh, buh, buh. Uh, actually, a lot of our podcasts, like, I put, like, our birthday as Albert Camus' birthday and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. This is That's really cute. I yeah. love his books. I love them. Yeah, say, they're amazing. Anyway, but he's explaining absurdity, which you can practice right now. What I want you to do, Mike, is I want you to sit down, right? And I want you to, de to, to de decompose the world around you. Look, if you're on the bed, look on your bed. Your bed is really just plant fibers that have been stitched together and stuffed with th this hair of an animal that we killed later for food. And now you're using that for warmth when you have clothing. You live in this rock and, and, and cement, like, square that, you, yeah. that humans decided was the best place for you. Like, it's strange. It's and so goddamn weird everything is so odd so before me and julian continue trying to like convert you to absurdity just we're not going to that'll take way too long yeah. so julian if i may stop you one more time uh -huh. try try not to do that because it'll this video is it, the video this ep, this episode is no. gonna be really long as is so okay yeah but i love thank you mike thank you julian i love this because it allows me to go and portray the true beautifulness of our universe like i know that we can go and do a lot by altering our present being right now and have this beautiful like 
absurdity of the human being, of what they can be. But it also allows me to go and feel quite shitty as well. Because it allows me to go and view the universe through its true lens, and that is one of kind of fucking misery by knowing that it is predestined for me not to have a large impact in this massive grand scheme. Okay, so Julian, if I'm sorry, but this is very beautiful for ending. Yeah. We have to do a quick decompression session because I have to go. Oh, God damn. I'm sorry. Do you have to go like right? Yeah. Oh. Okay, so quick decompression session. Yay, yeah, that was amazing. Wait, 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 wait. wait. One more thing. Yes, yeah, it's yes. just that like, in the end, there's nothing that you can do to go and truly grasp those fucking Guardians of the Galaxy as dreams that you truly have. They are possible and they are there. But you will almost guaranteely die. I'm not saying you will, but you will most likely. Okay. And, yeah. Sorry, I just have to... Yeah. Um, decompressor says, Go, Julian! You were amazing! Thank you. Uh, quick things we have to rattle off. I know this is really, really short, but I really have to go. So, Tears is amazing channel. You can talk about it. Mm-hmm. Because you said you wanted to. Yeah. Uh, well, it's fantastic. It's, uh, it's just, if you ever played Smash or you ever played any sort of video game that allows you to go and have a selection of characters, it allows you to go and view those, um, view organisms that we have inside of, the, uh, inside of our world as in those types of ways, where you start to see the X and Y scale between, like, you know... Strength, stealth, yeah, speed, yeah, so on. Everything, so on. and it's fucking beautiful. It's a great, it's a great channel. It allows you to kind of fully understand, in a way, how human, how organisms are just another facet of being the most suited for their environment and they do it in a really cute way yeah. i really appreciate it so i have a few things right off tracing you're amazing we love you so much yeah uh tracing scalp that is not any of you tracings who aren't tracing scalp yeah fuck you non-tracing scalp <laughs> um brad you suck yeah uh anything else we need to talk about before i need to quit oh yes ants canada look it up watch it uh <laughs> it kind of shows you the beautifulness of a small bunch of non-coordinated organisms working together and it's becoming, randomness be becoming order yeah. becoming order and yeah. it's beautiful yeah ants canada i this has been ian sokolov and this has been julian Dorazio. and remember none, none of this matters, matters. this towering being that allows itself to have what are you doing <laughs> I don't know <laughs> it is a towering being that allows itself to have <laughs> don't stop what are you doing <laughs> just continue man fuck you <laughs>